Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with Katie Barnett. Katie's first business was art. She found it therapeutic and it brought her great pride. But for a home-based business, it took up a great deal of her time, which made it hard while raising three young kids. The cost to benefit ratio was questionable. As new opportunities arose, she realized she could maximize profits, enjoy life more, working in other ways, and keeping her art for personal development and relaxation. Katie grew to be the head of a large organization in a short amount of time sharing clean living tips and products by leveraging social media. She loved leadership and getting to educate at a higher level while helping other women succeed. Katie became a student of social media and trained regularly on how to brand, grow, and deliver from home. In early 2021, life called for a hard left, which meant leaving a career, incredible income, and an amazing team in search of more. More freedom, more growth, more income, she says, more me. It was a leap of faith and absolutely terrifying, but the beauty of uncertainty is unlimited possibility. Katie now runs a large online business with multiple streams of income, unlimited possibilities, unmatched products, and the ability to help so many others, not just go to the next level, but many more levels above. No limits, Katie says. Today, we talked about taking a leap of faith, believing in your potential, and evolving into limitless opportunities. We also talked about social media, growing your brand, and so many things, how to grow your brand, how to deliver uh, your product. And the most meaty part of the conversation was talking about when there's an imbalance in your relationship and one partner is growing, and doing personal development and the other one is not or when you're scaling or your husband or your partner significant other is scaling and it leaves a different differential so one partner feels highly elevated and excited and the other one how how can you enroll them to go along on your journey and be a part of your dreams this episode today was gold. I so enjoyed Katie's freshness, her youth, her vision, and all uh, that she had to offer. So without further ado, let's dive into this episode. I am so excited to welcome Katie Barnett to the Sisterhood of Sweat today. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to see what we get into. We're already connecting before the podcast. And I, I know this is going to be a great show. It's going to be raw. It's going to be real. So you should make sure and stay tuned. Katie, I just want you to walk us through your story on how you got started into being like having this major business, major growth, and bringing people along with you on the journey? Well, I was a mom, just a mom, right? That's what we always say. It's like, it's, I, it's so sad. Every time I hear that, I'm like, you're not just a mom. Like, you're never just a mom. But I, I was momming it. I had three kids. I had kind of started uh, an art business had gone to school for education and then realized that I didn't want to be in school teaching all day. I wanted to be with my little kids. And so um, I'd started an art business that was growing and really hard. Like art is a really crappy world to be in because you spend so much time on it and nothing, you can never put a price on how much time and effort you put into something. So those of you in the art world, I feel you, I see you, you're amazing. Um, and somebody, a friend like who had sold everything under the sun, 
had this new thing and it seemed like something I would like. I didn't even want to spend the $35 to try it, but I did. It worked. Next thing I knew, I was like, okay, I, I can try and sell this stuff. And um, it was the type of business, it was network marketing the type of business where you can, you're supposed to run parties and host parties and, and do all those things. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I didn't want to do that. My husband is a firefighter in California. And so he's gone a lot and I did not want to spend the time he was home out at parties. So I was like, well, I'll just try and see if I can do this online, which was really not very heard of it within that company. And it started working. And um, I think what really, what really got me was um, what changed me as a person was one, I had this revelation that like, now that I'm showing up online and I'm doing these things and it's a business that I didn't really see myself doing, which I think was part of why people took me seriously. <laughs> Cause they knew that like, you know, maybe it just didn't fit like what I would do. So it must be something good. Right. And, um, and I was like, I had this opportunity to really shift how I get to show up to the world. And, you know, it seems silly cause it's social media. Everybody, everybody's on social media, but, and anybody can have this moment, this aha moment at any time. I was like, if I'm going to be showing up in people's feeds, if people are going to be looking to me, if I'm going to be offering education and information, I, I want to like live up to that and be somebody great in their life, like a light somehow, whether they're buying products for me or not. And so, and then within my team, I started doing the same thing because I was seeing in a lot of teams, it was just like micromanaging. And I'm like, this is a bunch of women who are like they have the right to make their own decisions and to run a business on their own. And so we started, I created, you know, my own team page or whatever. And it was a community where it was, everybody was the same level and everybody was helping each other at the same place. And, and it really was just a, a small little like micro world that to me, embodied everything that I really wanted to see in my like larger world of friend circles and just people in general, people online, right? Because you can go online, you can see all of this negativity, blah, blah, blah. the more positive you start showing up, the more you seek the positive. Like I feel like I go online, I get uplifted because that's the vibe I'm putting out. That's what I'm attracting. And that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, with that, I started to grow a really big team. I grew a big influence within that company. Um, and I grew a big online influence because I think I just wanted to, I wanted to grow and I wanted to help other people grow. And there really wasn't any major financial gain that I was looking for, but the financial gain came because that's just what happens when you set goals, you work hard and you continue to, you know, try and be positive in the world and move forward and bring people into that. And, and, um, so that was great, but I, I kind of reached a ceiling on where I was at. I wasn't able to think about really business outside of that business. And I wanted to be able to write books. I wanted to be on podcasts. I wanted to have my own podcast. I wanted to, you know, be able to offer services outside of just, you know, a product that I was selling and I came across a different business with a completely different type of plan and um, incredible leadership and that community that I had created within uh, my business before on a much larger scale. And um, it was a hard decision, but it was kind of one of those things where it was an overnight thing. Once I saw what was possible and what I'd be able to do and everything that I'd be able to grow outside of just that business, um, I made a big change, which was a scary thing. I, d I just talked about it the other day. I didn't even tell my husband when I resigned. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, just keep taking the money. I'm like, no, I lead these people and I can't sit there and lead them when I don't think that we're in the best place anymore. And so, um, I made a leap of faith and it's, it's just, it's paid off in, in a number of different ways, not just in that business alone, but in the way that I am able to show up outside of that business and the plans that I have for, you know, my own corporation and um, that my influence has grown greatly because I just kind of feel that freedom and that ability to go and, and what I, I always say, go forth and slay. Like, it's just always about that forward movement. And um, I, I was just reading Napoleon Hill, which is like, you know, the, the Bible of all personal development books, but um, there's like a whole chapter on how like 
top leaders in industry and whatnot, like they make quick decisions. And that's always something that I've been really like almost chastised for because I'll just like jump into something. But I, I haven't really steered myself wrong yet. You know, like it's that <laughs> intuition. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say like there were some jeans that I shouldn't have bought, but like, <laughs> but when it comes to these things, like sometimes there's that intuition and you're just like, this is something that it feels right on every level and I need to do it. And oh, uh, I love that. Scary, but, but it can also be the rest of your life. And so, you know, that's, that's where I'm at (laughs) more to come. I love go forth and slay. I love that. And also not getting stuck in our indecision because it's in the action. You can't see it in your, you you can't see it correctly in your head. It, It it's, it could actually stall you from growth and from moving forward I'm not saying don't think about things, but don't think about them too long because it's like this stalling thing that happens in your brain. Like Mel Robbins says, when it's time to get out of bed, it's the five, four, three, two, one rule blast off five, four, three, two, one. Cause otherwise you get stuck in all this stuff in your head about, well, I don't really want to get up, but I should, but oh, these covers feel good. And versus just getting up. And as soon as you got up, Oh, you started waking up, you had a little coffee, you're out the door and it's just making that decision, not giving your brain and your amygdala time to stall so that you're stuck in an action. I love that so much. Tell me a little bit about, uh, I was looking online because I was like, Ooh, she's got a social media company where you help people with their social. Yeah. You know, really when it comes down to it, it's so interesting to me because people get so stuck on like, how am I going to brand myself, you know? And then again, like you overthink it, like you just totally overthink it. And, and it's so simple because really any small thing is going to, it can connect to other people. So when, when it comes down to like what I do, when I have these discovery calls is I just have people tell me about themselves. And then I ask some questions. And like the other day I'm talking to somebody and she has teenage kids and like a tween. Right. And, um, she's kind of talking about, and, and there's a group of us who were talking about, um, our littler kids, you know, and she wasn't really part, part of the conversation. And I was like, so what, like, I can, I kind of feel like, Um, I know for me, I feel this sadness when it comes to the pregnancy and newborn stage. Like I'm no longer in that club, you know? Um, and it's crazy to have gone through it, but feel like I'm no, I'm just, there's something very special about those women who are in that stage. And it's like, I don't get to be a part of that anymore. And it like kills me sometimes. And I'm like, I imagine that like, it has to be kind of lonely being in this next phase because, there isn't as, you know, there's no more play dates and I'm sure that there are their own issues there. And she's like, it's so funny you say that because it is like, our kids don't want the moms around anymore. And they're, you know, they're teenagers and they're doing their own thing. And the other day we did like something before a dance and all the moms were, were sitting there talking. And she's like, we all realized it was the first time, like we'd ever really spoken to each other and we missed this community. And I was like, do you know how many people probably would resonate with that? All of the moms of teens out there who would resonate with, you know, and what it is that you're going through and what it's like when your daughter comes home and you want to know what's going on in her life. She shuts herself up in her room, you know, and, you know, it can be something just as simple as that. And I'm not saying like your full brand may, may circle around that, but you're going to pull people in to you and your story. And you're going to connect with people when you start talking about the things that people don't get to talk about all the time. And, you know, so a lot of times it's, it's, it's just that people don't see the purpose and the beauty in their own stories. Um, because it's just, it's just our life. It's just normal. But when you start kind of sharing and putting those moments out there, you'll find that you are going to connect and bring value to people. And that's really, that's the most important thing. Um, You can go find a good quote anywhere and post it online, but it's when I kind of dig deep into, you know, how hard it can be when uh, 
maybe an adult friendship kind of runs its course. You know, we can all, we can all relate to that. Like it is hard. It can be heartbreaking. And you're kind of going like, I'm not supposed to feel like this anymore because I'm not 16, but (laughs) you can still feel that kind of heartbreak at 38. It's, it's finding those moments and those things and those parts of your life that may feel really mundane to you, but are going to truly reach and provide insight and community for other people out there. And, and then, you know, I also help companies with branding and we go more kind of deep into the, you know, how to share online and how to get their name out there and all that. But my, my real love is just talking with mostly women about um, ways that they can show up and provide that light and value and connection online, because when you start diving into that realm of social media, you're not seeing all of the like crazy political, angry stuff. That's not, that's not what my feed is about. Like I go there and it's just a bunch of people trying to like support and encourage and, and it's really beautiful. I love that. And that's what the sisterhood of sweat is all about. Collaboration, mm-hmm. supporting, building each other up and positive, like encouragement. And I think people are really searching for that. They're seeking it out. And being in a community like yours, like mine, that is like where it's at right now. Now, as far as the social media goes, I have to say, I was looking at your services and I'm like, oh, maybe because I don't have time. That is the number one thing. It's like, I could think of a million ideas, but I don't have time to interact everything. So I'm like, oh gosh, could I just, you know, outsource and say, this is where I'm in. This is this where I am. This is what my business is about. Uh, these are like, where do you see my story ideas? And what do you need from me to can can I just hook you, plug you in, and pay you X amount to do XYZ for me? Because I don't think I'm the only one in that boat. Cause social media can be time consuming. Yeah. And just like the the stress of like having to curate something, post it, whatever, however many times a day the algorithm deems important. Um, But we all know that if you're running an online business, being present consistently on social media is very important. And, and, you know, and then when you kind of tie in the responses that, you know, are very important because you're, it's about connection, right? So it it can be a full-time job running a social media account for sure. And I think that's something that people don't take into account when they're starting, you know, to try and grow. It's not just some people, you might get really lucky with one reel, but then all of that will fall off if you don't continue down that road. And so, yeah, it's, it can be, you know, the simple parts are getting kind of a feed that looks aesthetically pleasing, you know, and then, and, and kind of just like that training on, you know, how often are you going to have, um, a picture of your dog, you know, if it's all pictures of your dog, that if you're running like a dog feed, then that's great. But if, if this is about you and what you're providing, then, you know, let's stick to like one every nine posts or so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and I didn't grow up in the generation of the internet. So all of this, I just had to learn on the fly, raising three kids and everything else. And I'm, you know, I'm 59. I'm a grandmother now. And so like, it's, it's this thing where you have to show up is what I'm learning. You have to show up and, and people don't know what your story is if you're not telling them. So you have to include them. So they feel a part of your journey so that it makes that is what makes your presence online. So potent and strong is showing up and just showing parts of yourself. And I just think you can't underestimate your reach and your message that you put out. Like, I think sometimes we shy away from saying things or doing things um, because we think, oh, I don't know, what will people think about that? Yeah, no, and you know, it's that authenticity. And it's funny, I, I posted, a few weeks ago. Um, and it was, it was, I don't normally post naked pictures. So (laughs) I'm just going to say that, (laughs) but it was, it was me naked. like right before I gave birth to my third baby. 
and um and I things are covered but I posted the picture because I've had this picture for a long time and when I took it I was sending it to my best friend to be like ill gross like I'm so done I'm over this and I'm in like <laughs> we were living in an apartment at the time because we were waiting for our home to be built I hated the apartment I hated everything about this picture and I just felt disgusting and I've gone back over the last five, six years and looked at this picture and it's like, God, that picture is gorgeous. Like I did not see myself in that picture, you know, know. isn't that so weird? It's the craziest thing. And so it took Mm -hmm. a lot for me to like put this picture there because it's not my typical, you know, share. Um, but the message behind it, and it was, it was about like being able to look back on one, like look back on your pictures and like by feeling those feelings of what I missed it, you know, it helps you to start recognizing more of that in your day-to-day life, right? Like taking in those moments a little bit more and like continue taking pictures because you never know when you're going to catch that moment that five years from now, you're going to be able to look back and learn from, you know? And I'm like, I beat myself up over that body that day. And it's easily one of my favorite pictures ever. And and I didn't know what that post was going to do, but the response from it was amazing because it was women who were pregnant, women who weren't pregnant, women who, you know, just like look Mm -hmm. at their bodies and, and scoff it on the daily or people who are like, I look back at who I was 10 years ago and it's, I'd give anything for that person. And I never even saw that what I had. And now I'm taking, you know, um, I'm not taking for granted what I have now. I mean, you are here, you are here. Like you are alive. That means that you can do something to get better. You know, you're not, you're you're here right now, listening to a podcast. You're not on a respirator. You're not like you're, you're doing well. And, um, it was just, it was just one of those moments where it was pure authenticity and bringing people into something that was hard for me to kind of share and talk about but it's that exact thing. You don't have to, sh- sh- it doesn't have to. I be love that so, <laughs> so much. I am all about the pictures. And I had a similar experience when I was competing. I remember I did, I was, I felt good going in. And then uh, I think it was like a girl that I had coached. She did better than I did in the show. And I remember feeling like, all, all, I didn't feel good. Also, I went from feeling really great and doing well in fitness, but not as well in bikini, but like, I didn't feel well. And I could, I, I just think that colored the whole experience. And I never thought I looked good. I never looked back at those pictures. I thought they were like horrible. And then I, I don't know, for some reason I saw them the other day and I'm like, amazing right (laughs) like what was I thinking I'm like there was nothing wrong with those pictures they're amazing and and also like you were talking about taking leaps and going after your dreams and your vision and not hesitating and I have this wild horses project which is oceanfront on the beach with wild horses running the beach coming up April 6th through the 10th for women because I believe that it's very empowering to have a photo shoot by a professional photographer that knows how to capture you, your essence, you, you know, who you are and what you project and yeah. help you to pose and be confident. And you have the hair and makeup artists doing your hair and just all the things. And it's very empowering to go to your dream location and do this. This will open women's minds to the, their potential and the possibilities of what they can achieve. So make sure you guys check in the show notes because I'll put the link. But okay. I'm just telling you that it's the same type of thing. I really believe that capturing images is is huge for confidence for getting your message out there it's just so many things yeah that is um i had a mentor early on in in my newest business um say like look you need hire a photographer if you have a friend who's willing to take those pictures it's really interesting when you have somebody who's 
whether it's a friend or a professional photographer who can they see you differently and you know they can bring those pieces out of you that you don't you don't see in yourself when you're looking in the mirror and it really is so powerful and I love that so so much and it seemed to me at the time I was like I'm not gonna hire somebody to come take pictures of me like I'll have my 10 year old do it but it is not the same. Um, it isn't. And that's what I think people don't understand until they actually do it, that they, uh, they don't see themselves the way that they are or even what they could project. What they could project, you know, when they're being photographed by a professional with the hair, the makeup, yeah. the perfect location, and you don't have a hundred kids calling on you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm just having fun. She's getting interrupted by somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Actually recording a podcast right now. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is so funny. So perfect. So I just love all that we've been talking about. And I just got to dive into this part. We all have our times of growth, of going for things, of going for dreams. I hope if you're not get on the bandwagon because we all have hopes and dreams I know sometimes you're up to your eyeballs and peanut butter jelly sandwiches or working on a kid's play or getting your kids off to college, but you're still the same person you were when you were young and you had dreams and goals and visions. And it's good to uncover them and bring people along on the journey with you. But as you grow, and you do go for your dreams, it's not always smooth. And there's fear because sometimes it's fear of success. What if that my partner doesn't come along with me for this journey? I, I want I want to grow. This is this is in my heart, but I don't want to leave my partner behind. Speak to that a little bit. Oh my gosh, so much. There's so much to say. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was it was that aha moment of I'm, I'm not just a mom, you know, I, I have more to offer. And, and we, we go through a certain point of life, you know, your parents tell you, you can be anything you want to be and you can do everything that you want to do. But then at some point that just like, you just like start being, and I feel like women do this a lot, especially, you know, in marriage and, and kids, and you just start serving everybody else. And, um, and what we don't realize is that when we start to serve ourselves and when we give ourselves permission to grow and, you know, and dream again, that we can be so much more to our family, to our kids. Like I can be a better encourager of my kids right now because I see what happens when you know, I believe in myself and I see a future that wasn't there 10 years ago. You know, I was, we were, I was maybe going to go back to teaching part-time and we were going to live, you know, a decent life, but there, there wasn't going to be the travel and there wasn't going to be the other things that like I, I had dreamed of, you know? And, um, and so, yeah, it can be very interesting and hard because I, I, I flipped the script on my family when I started taking my business really seriously. Um, I, you know, there were, my husband had a hard time understanding why I was on my phone all the time. And that can be really perceived as me just like, you know, messing around on the phone all the time when like, that's where I do my work, you know, and, and then um, and it kind of it ebbs and flows. So then there was more income and that was good. But then it was like, is it worth it if you're working all the time? And, um, and so, it, and then along with that, then came my, like, and especially in the last, I'd say year and a half, my, I think my first big, like aha book was, um, oh gosh, Gabrielle Bernstein um, you know, the universe has your back and, you know, no matter what your spiritual background is, that book is, 
it's amazing because it's about mindset, you know, and, um, it really just changed my changed me. And I was like, I'm going, I'm going to go and you guys can come with me. (laughs) I want to take everybody with me. Um, but it caused some concern, you know, and even as I earned more and more money, it, it was, um, it was more of like my higher thinking that really, it can be scary. It's kind of like if you're in a, in a toxic alcoholic relationship, right. And somebody stops drinking and the other one is just like, I don't want to stop drinking. (laughs) (laughs) And then you're on two different playing fields. And so that kind of, um, that's kind of the, like the best way to describe it was that, um, my husband works really hard and he was working really hard. And, and, and I think that sometimes he could feel like I didn't appreciate how hard he was working because I was now working really hard. And because I was steeped in personal development um, and he wasn't because he was, you know, working and putting fires out and, and just trying to relax. It was like, we were on two different, we were just in two different worlds, you know, and you can't understand each other there. And so I remember somebody saying to me at one point, like, if you continue to grow, they will either come with you or they won't. And, um, we kind of hit a point where I was convinced he was not coming with me and, um, I had to make big decisions and they were scary and awful and hardest times of my life. And I gave up and was like, but I can do this on my own with my kids. I'm not ever going on a dating app. I'm going to be a single mom who raises my kids and gives them a good life. And, and I can do this. I will do this. And, um, truly a point of just thinking that was my future. And I was, there was no hope. And then the universe had my back and (laughs) had a plot twist and and there was a plot twist and, you know, he's meeting me there now. And that's not, that's not a story to say that like, that's always going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. That's not what I was even going for at that point. You know, like I had spent years trying to kind of make that happen and facilitate that. But it wasn't until I said, I like took control of me and my future that then I was given the gift of, of him realizing that he wanted to do the same thing and meet me in that place. Um, and I think that that kind of gift or whatever you want to call it coming together of all the right things in the world can be in a million different ways. Like it it could have been just with my, my business taking off or my kids being, you know, happier and healthier or or whatever it is. This is just how it manifested for me. But, um, it, it just really speaks to, I believe that continued understanding that I do need to keep working for myself for the greater good of my family and my community. And as long as I do that with a good heart and a good soul and a good intention, that the right things are going to happen. And I'm thankful. I'm very thankful that that means that my family will have the opportunity to stay together and, and grow together. And it's beautiful getting to see my husband become this best version of himself and, and taking and doing all of the things that like, I never could have imagined him (laughs) doing, um, ever, um, you know, uh, but it just, like I said, it just speaks to, I was ready. I was ready to do it on my own. I was like, and I, I was like, you know, friends would say, you get on, you can find a guy. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with a relationship ever again. I'm perfectly happy. That's the thing. It's okay to be a single woman. Like, do people not know that? I think that that should be said because people need to know that you can be a strong and amazing single woman and And be happy. And be happy. Yeah, and because you can can't be happy in a relationship if you're not happy alone. Right, right. And I heard so many things in that, but I would also say when we are growing, it's that thing where if your partner isn't into self development and they're not growing and you are, it really is like, being at this level and they're at this level and it's not even, and the difference is going to be felt. 
And a lot of times your partner doesn't understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. That's half of it. Because right. when you were on your phone, he didn't get that you're doing business. It isn't the way he does business. Right. And the same for me, my husband did not understand why I was posting on social media. We both grew up in the same era. So he didn't understand all of the things that I was doing, why I was doing them until we were at a Lisa Nichols speak and write. And they asked us to tell our partner, he, he did take, you know, go with me, which was huge and right. paid yeah. for VIP tickets for us. And we're in the audience and we have to ask each other what our greatest why is. And I started to cry and tell him what my why was and why I was doing all that I was doing. And he got it. And then after that, he was my biggest supporter. And like, it was the easiest thing putting up my dream gym because he was in my corner. And it doesn't always happen that way, but it, it is eye-opening because I think a lot of the time we expect people to come on the journey with us, but we haven't really explained to them where we're going, why we're going there, what we're doing and all of the things. And so I think helping people come along on your journey is key. And also in social media, that's kind of what you're doing. People don't understand all of that if you don't tell them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's so true. And, and, you know, it's, you know, people will, they fear the vulnerability. They fear the authenticity because they don't feel like they're enough of, of whatever. And, and the funniest thing about that is that it's, it's the other way around. Like it's you that people, they will, they'll appreciate if you're shy, if you're, you know, like if, if you're awkward on, you know, going live, but you want it to be a part of what you do, they're going to appreciate you rather than just like reading a script saying, I am nervous as all get out, but I'm going to do this because I have something to say and I'm going to fumble over my words, but, <laughs> and people are going to love that because it's real and it's how they might feel. And, and you're doing it, you know, people want to cheer you on. And, um, and yeah, I just, I love what you said so much. Cause it, it is true. Like if without, you know, whether you have a partner or your family, um, you know, siblings, children, if you're just going full force, but they don't know what the bigger picture is, if they're not brought into that, um, it can, it can, their perception is everything, right? You know, like it's, it's just all about an individual's perception. And I think that's a lot of what like my husband and I have been working on. It's like, I can, and everybody's had this experience, right? Like the way you say something, you say like, could you put that dish in the sink? or in the dishwasher, please, for the love of God. Um, and <laughs> they perceive it as they, they perceive it as you saying, you never put any dishes away and you don't help me in, in the kitchen when like, really, that's not what you were, maybe it was what you were saying, but it's, it's all about that perception. And so opening those lines of communication and it doesn't have to be in some great, amazing conference, you know, but making sure that you're taking the time to explain to your people and online or in your family or wherever else, like what it is that you are wanting to do um, in a way that they can hopefully perceive it, how you mean it. Um, it. It can take some practice. It can mean that you're gonna do it over a number of posts or in a number of conversations. Maybe you have to write a letter. Um, but I mean, that's just really honestly, the key to communication is knowing that people are gonna perceive things their own way, unless you take the time to help them understand what it is that you are for. But it does really help when you bring people along on your journey, because otherwise they have no clue, like why you're doing what you're doing, what is in your head, uh, why all of a sudden all these changes, and they're probably afraid that you're going to grow away from them and that they're going to lose you. Yeah. And so then how are they going to react? How would you react? And if it was you and somebody you love is growing, 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 and you feel like you're being left behind, it's almost the same when I lead like a crazy boot camp class. If, you know, you go way beyond, people feel left behind. So you got to kind of 
hold back, stay back, be with them, make sure everybody's doing what they should, you know, you're trying to get them to do, because that's, I think that's a feeling. It's a real feeling that people get. And, and, uh, if we want to do like what happened with me, where it just became easy because he was helping me, right. Instead of fighting you, then I think that that is like a crucial part of your journey. But I don't believe that someone who loves you should hold you back. Um, I do. I do not. I think they should be your cheerleader, they should, your greatest support, not your saboteur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then and, and figuring that out is, you know, it can take time. It can take some therapy. It can take a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I know like in our, in our situation, it was scary for him. And, and it was, it scared him that I was trying to grow outgrow him, you know? And so for us to be able to come together and me say like, I want to do this with you. Like, that's my greatest dream. And like this, this has everything to do with you, not, you know, nothing to do with you. And then, um, having him, you know, realize that he can support me and that it's gonna only bring us together more and help me do the things. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, it, it, it is exceptional. It gives you a bigger, see, that's the thing too, is it gives you a bigger, like if, if your partner does well, instead of looking at it as, um, something that's taking away from you, it's actually adding to, you know, you're part of that group. Wow. We both got a bigger piece of the pie because my partner's doing this. Oh, wow. We get a whole pie versus, oh my gosh. Um, like that it's taking something from you and it can be hard in relationships. You see it all the time in Hollywood. If let's say your famous movie stars, like when it was uh, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, and maybe Jennifer is getting these large movies and Brad is not getting any roles. I'm still so heartbroken by that, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> they were so sweet, Tanner. So it's like this imbalance, right? Yeah. And then the, the, the balance has to come into play. So I think that that happens all the time in friendships and relationships, partnerships. And so I think it's this ebb and flow of just working on it. So I really like this conversation. This is so like key. What message are you hoping to convey to everyone, like your biggest why and why you're doing all the things you are? I just, I, you know, I just want people to stop selling themselves short just because they haven't done what they thought that they were going to do. Um, you know, this last couple of years have been just a huge realization, not just for myself, but like uh, getting to help women see more in themselves and realize that like, you can set a new goal. You can, you can set a goal that is like so far from what you thought you were going to be doing with the, the rest of your life. Like you can do that. I stole my son's ukulele last Christmas and like, I jam on this thing now, you know, <laughs> I learned how to skateboard and play the ukulele in the last year because I'm like, I don't, I wanted to do it. We start, we, it's like, you just stop believing that you can do new things because you reach that age and you've got the, you've got to get the kids to school and you've got to do the things and then make dinner and da, 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 da. And it's like, this is our life and it can be, it can be more, even if it is amazing and beautiful and exactly what you want it to be. You are, if you want to grow as a human, the sky is the limit and you just have to be willing to believe in yourself and try the new things and fail a little bit and learn to love the failure because as long as you're failing forward, you're moving forward. Um, and that, I mean, I, that's a lot, it's loaded answer, I guess, but the truth is, is that it, I just want people to start seeing that it's never time to settle and there's always further to go more to do. Um, you're never too old or boring or shy to better yourself and grow in new ways to earn more money. I mean, abundance is out there. You guys, there is money to be had and to be made 
And, um, you know, money may not buy happiness, but it buys a lot of freedoms. And um, I think that opening up new streams of income and doing things that you love while you're doing that is one of the best and healthiest and most incredible things that you can do for yourself. There are so many books out there to read. There are so many podcasts to listen to this being an amazing one. And um, it's all out there for the taking. So like, get at it, go forth and slay. And what would you like to say to women out there that right now cannot relate to what we're talking about at all, because they're so far away from, they're in up to their eyeballs and I don't know, dirty diapers, peanut butter, jelly sandwiches, school, homeschool, uh, you know, college or whatever they're in. And they have forgotten who they are and how to dream and that they're worthy of having a dream. Pick up a journal pick up a journal and just start there and start like remembering some of the dreams that you had as a kid, start writing down the things that like, you know, you wish that you could do or have, whether it's a trip, whether you never got to go on a honeymoon, whether it's, um, you know, putting a jacuzzi in the backyard or just being able to buy the makeup that you really want to be able to afford, you know, like, but start writing down, like, how you want to feel every day, write down. This was the biggest thing that I had one of my mentors do for me on a really bad, probably one of my worst days in this decade. And she said, I'm going to get off the phone with you right now. I have a meeting, <laughs> but you're going to pick up a pen and a piece of paper. And I was in the car out front of my, my son's TK. And all I had was like a bill. And she's like, you're going to write down every good quality, you know, to be true about yourself. So start there. Okay. And, and, and I remembered who I was in doing that, you know, and you, you need to start seeing yourself for, for all the good that you are and writing in that journal is just a place to start, but you're going to start learning things about yourself and you're going to ignite that flame within you. That's going to help you start seeing that even though you are steeped in the diapers and you are like so sick of doing laundry and, and all of those things, like you can, you can have more. And, and the, then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hire somebody for two hours a week to come and fold and put away all that dang laundry because that you you're too good for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first assistant oh, ever. Was a laundry started assistant. something here. <laughs> Put that on retweet. <laughs> yeah. So just the laundry. My first assistant ever was my laundry. So I was like, I had no idea that you could actually fold and put away all the laundry for five people in a matter of two hours. I thought that that was impossible. It's not. Best money all over. I love it. I love it so much. So outsource and focus on your strengths. And just like, look at the, how can I do this instead of why you can't do it? Right. Always. And, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you for free, reach out to me on Instagram and I will love to just encourage. That's all I want to do. I want everybody to feel this, like this freedom to become. I love it so much. This has been such a great conversation today, Katie. I've enjoyed you so, so much. Likewise. And I think it was powerful. Where can everybody reach you on social media and get a hold of what you bring? I am at KT, the letters K-T-A-N-N-E Barnett, Katie Ann Barnett on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, Katie Ann Barnett. I think I'm Katie Ann Berardinelli Barnett, but if you just go to my um, levelafternext.org, you'll find all my links and you can get a hold of me there any way you'd like. So great. Thanks so much for being on this show. I've really enjoyed your Thank freshness, you. your realness. And this has just been a, an amazing hour. So I want to thank you. And I want to thank everyone for listening to this episode of the Sisterhood of Sweat. Bye, thank everybody. You. Bye.